Yo, partnership alert, partnership alert, partnership alert. Living Corporate has a partnership with LinkedIn Learning, an American massive open online course provider that provides video courses taught by industry experts across a wide array of subjects. Now, the partnership is because Living Corporate has courses on LinkedIn Learning focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion for leaders, career professionals, and anyone really looking to upskill themselves and be better allies. So make sure you check out our courses on LinkedIn Learning by clicking the link in the show notes. And let's just say you don't want to do that. When you go to LinkedIn Learning on LinkedIn, search Live in Corporate. We'll be right there. All right. Peace. Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode. This is the, se- the season finale, right? Season finale? Season, season finale. finale of the Access Point. Just for this year. Just for this year. My name is Brandon Gordon. And your name? I'm Julia Rock. Hey, everybody. Hey. And we'll just let you know before we get started, just talk a little bit more about Living Corporate. Living Corporate is a digital media network consultancy focused on workplace equity and inclusion. Living Corporate centers and amplifies black and brown voices just as yourself in the workplace through digital media production and business-to-business consulting. The network offers a variety of programming, and tonight we're excited you join us for our latest installment of the Access Point. Julie, All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the Access Point. <laughs> So the Access Point is uh, is a weekly webinar uh, focused on preparing black and brown college students and early career professionals for the workforce by having the real nuanced uh, conversations they don't know that they need. So the idea is that we want to give you the real, we want to give you the, the hidden secrets, things that may not be kind of uh, easy for you to see or easy for you to think about. So we try to get down to the to the nitty gritty for you guys. Absolutely. And so th- this this episode is just more of a recap of every of all the conversation that we had um, this entire uh, season three. Right. And so one of the ones I wanted to bring up is with the episodes you had last week, Julia, with uh, Sherman and Preston about entrepreneurship. Like how did, um, for the people that missed out, can you give us like a, just a brief synopsis of it? Yeah, absolutely. And if you missed it last week, that's on y'all <laughs> because because that episode was absolutely fantastic. And what we talked about, so we had uh, Sherman and Preston of the fashion brand, uh, Sherman Preston, and they, they talked to us a little bit about their um, entrepreneurship journey. And what we what we kind of did in that conversation was kind of take off the, the the romanticization. I'm going to make a word here, uh, you know, the romanticizing of entrepreneurship, and really started to talk about the challenges um, when it comes to launching your own business and maintaining it. The the situations where you may get knocked down uh, as an entrepreneur. How do you bounce back from some of those things? Uh, what's it like to juggle a full time job or you know or juggle a kind of separate career along with running a business. Um, and, so, you know, there were some lighthearted moments and we, and we provided some advice as well. But what we wanted to do was give people more information about what it truly means to be an entrepreneur and not just kind of what you see, you know, on Instagram, uh, you know, of how people have, you know, glamorized being an entrepreneur, that everybody's rich. They start a business today and then next week they're rich and they've quit their job and, and, and they've got all this this money in the bank and they're, you know, they're like Scrooge McDuck, you know, swimming with, with a money bin in the backyard. It's a, it's a very different conversation. So I thought it was fantastic. I highly rep- recommend it. If you didn't see it, that that you that you get on the Living Corporate site and and, and check out the Access Point link to, in order to watch that episode. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. It's a it was a great conversation. I, I'm I'm sad if you missed it, but but you still have a chance to go and catch the recap. Right, absolutely. And yeah, just just for any episode, you can catch us on Apple Podcasts. You can see us live on Crowdcast as well, too. And, and we also are live on LinkedIn and live on Facebook as well. So you can catch us on all those platforms to, to look at those episodes, right? And so another episode that I really like the most, I really like was with Nadine and Zara when they talked about the um, effect of interviewing, inter- right? Yes. Oh, man, that was a that was an excellent one, right? And so I of course, everyone knows I took notes. I took notes on the episode, and what one thing I've learned is, you know, people, us as black and brown individuals, we don't have that access to talk to people to really effectively interview, right? Uh, the most 
we can do is really practice while we're interviewing. And that's really not the right way to go about it, right? Go ahead and find some, find a mentor, find a couple of people that you really know and trust with the information and really interview with them, like really sit down with them and interview and see what, how do you interview the tip, different types of interview? How do you answer certain questions? How do you ask certain questions, right? So we really need to, really hone in if you really want this job to how to really present yourself in the correct manner. So what did you take out, take from the interviewing episode? You know, um, I think it's just, um, especially what you mentioned of being able to answer different types of questions, because I think people, they, they may just look online and they, they take a few uh, kinds of prep questions and they think, okay, that's, that's it but it's about being ready to answer different types of questions. So whether it's behavioral or situational or, you know, kind of the tell me about a time when, or what would you do if type of questions and just being, just being prepared because I think for some people, if you haven't had certain experiences, it's like, well, I can't answer the question. I won't know how to answer the question, but, but the goal of the interview is to see how, to see how you can think as well. So it talks about your past experience and so forth, but it also is testing your skill set so that if you're in a situation, what would you think to do or what would your skills tell you to do? And so being prepared, um, for, for, for the, for different types of interview questions, I think was one of the essential points, um, of that episode. And you brought up experience, right? So that was that was leads to us to another uh, episode that we had when we said no experience, no problem. And then and in that episode, to me, that was like my personal favorite episode, right? Uh, was that episode where we talked about if you didn't have experience, how can you present that you know the otherworldly experience that you gained to the workforce, right? You were a fresh college student, you don't know exactly how can my skills that I've learned in school and in various jobs and doing community service, how can those skills transfer to the workplace? So we really talked, we really gave a good, some good examples of really honing in those skills of, of transferable skills, right? To say, hey, I done, I was this lead on this project. I I was able to balance my time doing community service organization, doing community service in the, in the, in the in the community, I was able to have a, a part-time job while paying for school, right? And those things really transfer when you talk about when you talk about the workplace because the, your employers want to see: Are you able to multitask? Are you able to be under stress, be under pressure, right? So just talking about those types of skills can really transfer. Yes, we we can talk X's and O's all day when it comes down to the workplace, right? About what the actual job is, but. Mm -hmm. they, they know like you have a degree you have the ability to learn you have, you have the ability to learn difficult information because if you didn't you wouldn't have this particular degree now the question is do you have the other worldly skills that can be, that will be able to be transferred to the job that you're that you're currently applying for right and, and and i think that that's something that folks have to keep in mind because when you're in college, you get a lot of theoretical knowledge and you get you get kind of the subject matter. But what what companies are also testing for is to understand, OK, can you practically apply certain things and can you actually navigate as a worker now? So, uh, you know, because, yes, if you can do all the calculations in your head, but you don't know how to navigate, navigate in the space, you don't have effective time management skills, you don't have effective leadership, um, you don't how to know how to multitask, you don't know how to present well, a lot of that theoretical stuff may not, it, it's still not going to get you far in the workplace. And so being able to speak to those transferable skills that you have uh, from from a part time job, from community service activity, from from projects. I'll be honest. When I was um, when I was coming out of college and getting my getting my first uh, my first job, one of the things the the interviewer mentioned to me was looking at my resume and seeing that hey, you had a full course load, and you were and you were able to um, to to work because uh, I think I I think I was doing like 
ticket taking someplace and I was an admin assistant somewhere, some, some sort of janky background I have. And, um, but, 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 but the, but the interviewer said it's, it was good to see that you can complete a full course load and still work because it shows that you know how to manage your time. You know, that, that, that you know how to prioritize things are important because you've been able to keep relatively solid grades and still do this. So, thinking about those kinds of kind of little things that you don't think matter or you don't think that you have, but it's those things that employers are looking at, not just the kind of theoretical knowledge. And that's why when, the, when you're doing those interviews, right, it's good to talk to somebody about your experience because, you know, usually when, when employers are looking for people that's coming out of college and looking for a certain GPA, and they'll say, we don't want anybody less than 3.5 or anybody less than 3.2 or whatever. But you'll be surprised at how many people slip through those cracks. And they're able to really present themselves on paper a certain way to get them to bypass all the the, the, the filters and stuff when it comes down to the HR people. So it's, in, you know, what you really understand is, you know, people that do have those 2.5s, 2.9s, 3.1s, there are sometimes the, the, the smarter people in the room than just the four, the people with the 4.0s. Because you have a 4.0 doesn't necessarily mean that you're you're smart. It just means you just know how to effectively take a test and pass it with a certain grade. But, you know, I've graduated with college with three two, right? And I and I worked and I did the community service events. You know, you, you have to be able to tell your story. Right. That's really what it is. Be able to tell your story and be able to just let them know, like, hey, yes, I was doing all this stuff. This is why my grades were a certain way. You just want to make sure you're presenting good grades to your future employers, but you also want to tell the story of what was going on through in these four or five years that you were in college. And if you were able to effectively tell that story, then more than likely you'll get the job that you're applying for. Right. I mean, because because I'll be honest, the company that I that I work for, the cutoff that they had for GPAs was three five. Um, and, and so and then but I came in and I had a three four. So I graduated with a cumulative GPA of a three four. Um, but how I was able to position it was here's the experience I have here, are the kinds of courses that I took. Uh, you know, here's my major GPA, which was above a three five. So I'm like, I know that you're looking for the cumulative one, but if you look at my major, you know, it's a it's a, it's a three five. And so, um, but again, how do you tell your story? How do you show that you've mastered the subject matter? How do you show that you can come in and add value? And again, if you've got that work experience, it's like yes, you could have somebody with a four who doesn't have any sort of experience at all. But if I've shown that I've already interned in this space, or I've had a co op of some kind or some other volunteer opportunity working in this space. I've got practical, tangible things that I can apply right now versus Mr. 4.0 over there, who's all theoretical knowledge and no uh, practical application, you know, because the company's paying you to work there, you know, and so if you can come in and show that you can do the work, um, they're, 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 they may have a different conversation with you, even if your grades are not quite at the quite at the level obviously we want people to get strong grades so please don't take from this conversation <laughs> that bg and i are saying right. you don't have to perform academically we're you know you we're just saying that we managed to slip through that's all we're saying but we don't want yes. that for y'all <laughs> prioritize yeah. your grades guys <laughs> yeah, speak, it's, it's speaking, of, it's speaking of grades we had a very great episode with, with caleb and you know caleb was just a, a a recent graduate of um, Texas State, and he talked about his experiences of going out to the workforce and really uh, applying what he what he's what he's trying to learn not applying, but he's trying to learn, you know, on the fly now how to interview, how to talk to people, how to build up your LinkedIn profile, how to build up your resume, so he can present those types of things to future employers to to get the positions that he wants. So, you know, that's one of my main takeaways just from this season. Like, if you really want if you're in that position where you're a recent college grad and you don't know where to start, start with that episode first. Because to me, that you you, you can put yourself in his position and really say, hey, is this the path that I want to go to? This is what I need to learn. This is what I need to take from. So if you don't listen to any other show, right, listen to that one. That one is the one, so that's your basis for what the access point is all about, right? Absolutely. So, Julie, do you have any comments on, on that one as well? 
Yeah, and, and I think it I think it was good because like you said, you the the people who are listening could put themselves directly in Caleb's shoes, right? Because obviously you you're employed right now, I'm employed, we've been, you know, we're we're a little bit older, you know, we're not necessarily ju- just graduating from school. And so having somebody on the show who's saying, This is where I'm at right now. This is, um, you, you know, this is what I, these are the challenges I'm facing. You know, the folks who are watching can kind of see themselves in Caleb and, 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 but also as they're listening, they can hear the advice that, that, that Caleb received and see how they can apply it for themselves in their own kind of uh, career search and, and job search. So if you're a new grad who's just starting out and don't know where to start, or you've been applying and you don't feel like you've been successful, or you don't know how to position yourself, listening to that episode will give you some some real nuggets as to this is how you can approach uh, this is how you can approach that job search process and this is how you can highlight your transferable skills you know on your resume and that kind of thing so that 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 episode was 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 pretty robust and and like I said I think it's beneficial for the folks who are at the same kind of are in the same boat as Caleb and they can kind of see themselves um, and hopefully apply some of some of what we what, what we were able to share with Caleb Right. And so, you know, we, we talked about sharing information we talked about um, interviewing. We talked about, you know, um, not having experience and really trying to reach out to somebody that does have experience. Right. So building those types of relationships with those people so you can share this type of information. Right. So we had an episode with uh, Reginald Bimbo um, yeah. talking about cultivating. <laughs> Man, that seems so long ago now. Like, I, don't, I, was I know, like, right? I'm like, dang, yeah, we did have that episode. <laughs> Right. So we had an episode, Reginald Bimbo, talking about co- cultivating authentic relationships. Right. And so he he gave us a lot. Please go, if you have the chance, go listen to the episode. He dropped some, some real good gems on there. Uh, just talking about talking to people. Right. You know, he's he's running for office in Maryland. So, you know, his job all day is to talk to people and make those authentic relationships. Right. He talked about, you know, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, reaching out to people, you know, to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm checking in on you, see how you are. This is what I'm doing on my on, on, on my front on the political side. Please join us, right? And so you don't have to go in that right on the political side, but you, what you can do as um, college, uh, you know, college grads, entry level people, mid level career is find people that are willing to work with you to sit down with you and just have that conversation. It can be about work, it can be about school, about family, but just having that person to talk to. And building that, um, having a confidant to really help you in your, in your career path. You know, sometimes you may fall by the wayside. You need somebody going to help you pick you back up and say, hey, Brandon, you're doing this. Hey, Julie, you're doing this. This is good. Keep it up. Or I would do it this way. Or I would look at it a different way. Right. But you have that trust in that other person you've been talking to for so, for so long that, hey, I trust you with this information. We can go ahead and make it better. And so that's one of the things that I've learned with uh, the original and, and doing that show with him was just, you know, talking to people, right? Not really just like trying to boast, boast and brag about myself, but just talk to people just organically, right? If you build it, if you have that open line of communication, you'll be surprised at how many doors are open just with that, you know? Yeah. Not really... And not just with like just business, but it's personal as well. Like you're trying to run a business, so you, you're trying to be in politics, and you're just trying to go up the corporate ladder, right? You have to make those types of relationships. You don't people trust people who interact with them. People trust people who are talking to them. People who trust people who are not closed off because you don't you can't you don't know what they're up to, right? Where we. Like, what are you doing? Why are you quiet? You know, once you get really get to know people and talk to them, you really get to understand them, right? You build more trust in them. When you build more trust, people trust you. And that's really what the, the goal of it is, the people to trust you. Absolutely. And and I think, you know, going back to to, to, to building those authentic relationships, you know, he, he, he talked a little bit about, you know, almost like playing the long game with relationships. So not trying to engage people just to get something immediately. It's working that relationship over time, celebrating people's birthdays, you know, touching base after an event, a new job, and, you know, just just having touch points with them. It can't be that I need to meet 
or I want to get this done tomorrow. And so I'm going to try to slide into BG's, you know, uh, DMs today. Like, hey, let's be best friends. I also need X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah. Because we don't want relationships to be transactional. Exactly. And, and I think I tweeted this the other day where it's, um, where it's like, you know, relationships can take and networking can take you where talent and experience cannot, right? Because your talent and experience can get you very far, but there may, but depending on the relationships you have, someone may be willing to, to, to stick their neck out for you or vouch for you in a different situation because they know you. You may not even have the skills low key. But they're but they're they're willing to bet on you because you because of the relationship they have with you and the fact that they know you, your work ethic. And so they may talk to you on a side like, listen, don't embarrass me, but I'm gonna put your name up for this. Right. But again, it's it's based on the fact that they have a relationship with you. And so it's so critical to take the time to invest in authentic relationships, not transactional ones. Don't be a you know, an opportunity gold digger, an opportunity or an opportunist or whatever, but really seek to build authentic relationships, um, not just for the short term, either for the long term as well. You'll be surprised at how many people um, make deals on the golf course. That's just not a, 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 a saying. That's actual real life. People real make life. people make deals on golf courses. Why? Because you built their type of relationship. I don't want to talk to you while we're in a nine to five setting suit and tie. I want to talk to you where we're comfortable, where I can see you in your element. You can see me in my element. We can talk more freely, more open, be less political, right? So that's where meeting at the golf course, that's just not a saying. That's really what happens. And you build, you know, it doesn't have to be the golf course. It could be playing video games online. It could be at a bar. It could be being social somewhere at a football game. I've seen people make authentic relationships in the strip club. I've seen it happen, you know. And but that, I mean, we we don't know what the setting might be. Could, Listen, it could be any yeah, right, exactly, Julie. It could be anywhere. But if you can get that person to be comfortable, if you can get that person to really trust in you and buy in you, then you, the sky's the limit. But the thing exactly. is, you have to have to get that person to buy into you. Exactly, and and again, the the way that you get people to buy in is by letting them get to know you and vice versa, showing genuine interest in what they do and who they are so they can return the favor and getting to know you genuinely. And, 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 and again, trying to establish like a real genuine base of rapport, again, not something based in transaction. Like I'm, I'm just getting to know you because I want a thing or I want your help or I want a job. It's like, I just want to get to know what you do and, and begin to build a relationship. And if something, because what people don't, the cheat code is, you know, getting to, to build those relationships genuinely, because sometimes you don't even have to ask for the job or the opportunity or whatever. The person will volunteer it because of, 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 of the relationship you have with them and what they see in you. So don't sleep on these authentic relationships because you may not even have to ask for anything. They may just be willing to do it for you just, just off the strength of the, of the interaction you've had. Right. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, last, but certainly not least, right. We, in our very first episode, we talked about defining our personal success. Right. And, you know, we have all have various, very definitions of what personal success is. Right. So if you, if you can, please go to the very first episode that we did on season three of the access point is talking about personal success and to really understand, right. That what you define as your success is what you define. We can't define it for you. We can help you. We can guide you. But what you deem as success, right? It could be, hey, I woke up this morning. That's success. If you did good on an interview, did good on a test, right? And you studied hard and you made an A, that's success. If you got a job interview and you did very well, that's success, right? So anything that you've done um, and you can put a, a, a goal to it, right? It doesn't have to be on a certain timetable, right? And just this, I'm speaking freely for myself here, right? It doesn't have to be on a particular timetable. It doesn't have to be on a particular um, time frame. As long as you are able to set a goal, work to meet that goal, and then meet that goal. And so, to me, that that's what defines my personal. Experience. Go ahead, Julie. No, I'm just gonna say, you know. Um just kind of thinking about your lane is your lane, right? The, the fact is, you know, there's no traffic if you're in your own lane. 
<laughs> right? So, so that, you know, there's no, there's no one to look at if you're in your own lane. And so thinking about what you define as success, not letting social media dictate that to you, not letting other people dictate that to you. So what you feel is, is, is going to be um, kind of where you feel like you've made it personally. What are the things that are important to you? And that's really what success comes down to. Um, you know, there was a time where success for me was like, I wanted to be, you know, on the cover of, of fortune and I wanted to be the first black, you know, investment banker, billionaire. Like I had a whole thing uh, that I wanted to be when I first started in college and finance. But over time, you know, what I saw for myself in terms of success was me having more of an impact on people. And that's, you know, obviously now how I'm in the coaching space and, and helping basketball athletes at this point. But, you know, it changes when I really thought about what's important to me, not just what other people deem as success, but what's important to me. And so, I, you know, for, for those of you that are listening, you know, personal success really comes down to what are the things that are important to you? What do you want your life to look like? Not what other people's lives look like. What do you want your life to look like in the long term? What kind of freedom do you want to have? What kind of opportunities you want to have? Those are the things that will help you define personal success, not what other people are doing. Absolutely. And with that being said, right, we had a great season, a uh, great season, first first part of the season, right? We, we are coming back in January. Don't don't get yes. the truth. We are coming back in January, right? So just remember, uh, we'll keep posting the shows. We'll go keep um, keep following us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Crowdcast, LinkedIn, wherever social media platform you follow us. Thank you for following us there. Um, Julia, uh, any any last words for the people before we sign off for the season? Um, Man, what would I say? Well, first and foremost, if you missed the episodes, go watch them uh, for the season. But, um, but what I would say is, you know, use this time, especially as you're getting into the holidays, to, to reassess what's important to you. It's easy to kind of get lost in the grind of school and job hunting and so forth, and you may be getting overwhelmed or frazzled. But use this kind of coming down time in the, in the holidays to really kind of rethink and reassess what it is that you want out of your career, what is it that you want out of life, so that you can feel energized for all of these activities that you have to take on. Again, whether it's academics or it's or it's um, or if it's job search or getting into a new job, um, you know, I want you guys to, to make use of this downtime and so that you can put in focus what your personal success, what you want it to be, what you want it to look like. And so take the time to personally reflect on, on what you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I think I would take uh, for this, this season, right? Any last moments or notes or whatever. Um, take time for yourself, right? Invest in yourself, right? These uh, living corporate is a, is a platform, right? Where it needs to be utilized for black and brown individuals, right? We are, we are really a group of, of individuals who, who are taking the time out each and every week um, to really help out individuals that look like us. And, you know, investing in yourself is one of the uh, most, it's, not, it's the best and most rewarding things that you can do for your career, right? No one else is going to invest in you but you. No one's going to put more work into you than you. Right, so take what we do from the access point, take what we do um, from the Living Corporate Network and really help out your career, right? And, and that's what we're here for, right? Uh, you can follow me on Ghostface Sigma. You can follow me on LinkedIn at Brandon Gordon. But really take the time out. If you ha if you have questions, please ask questions. But I'm more than willing to help. I'm more than willing to, to help someone out that looks like me so we can, we can take over the world together. We can really... Um, have more people who look like us in the workspace and to really have our ideas highlighted. And if you take anything from, from this episode, from this season, just please just invest in yourself. Uh, Julia, where can the people find you on social media? Uh, sure. So, so folks can find me. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Julia Rock. Um, and I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at the Julia Rock. Um, I, um, I have a low key Facebook page that I'm trying working on and it's also at the Julia Rock. Don't have a lot of followers there yet, but if you want to get in on the ground floor, it's also at the Julia Rock on Facebook as well. 
Okay. Like I said, you can follow me on Twitter at Ghostface Sigma. Um, just like the member of the Wu-Tang Ghostface and the Sigma from Five Bit Sigma Turn Incorporated. Um, you can find us on Living Corporate on the web at livingcorporate.tv. You can find us on Twitter at livingcorp underscore pod. You can find us on LinkedIn at Living Corporate. And you can find us on Instagram at Living Corporate. And Julia, we had a great season. Yeah. Uh, Third season was it was excellent. Catch us in January. We haven't set the time yet, but in January, be on the lookout for part two, season three, part two of the Access Point. And with that being said, we'll see you guys and girls in January. See you guys.